these videos of me making short videos with the girls might seem like just frivolous fun. Well, it is fun. But I really see a non-frivolous outcome to, uh, to these efforts that I've been making lately with my videos and photography. I could see it doing some good. You see, while I'm sure all these ladies love the fact that I'm such a handsome and attractive guy and they love getting all dressed up and made up to be hanging out with handsome Charlie, I actually pay the sexy sister here a little stipend to be a model for us, and, uh, and I'm glad to be able to, uh, to help her out a little bit. Times are tough here in Thailand, as they are in many places in the world. And Nanun here, who is a law student, is my camera person, and she also gets a little, uh, a little bit of a stipend for her help with, uh, with, with our silly videos. So um, yeah, it's occurred to me that if I can continue to grow this channel and make it uh, income producing, which I'm well on the way to doing, well, I, I really don't need that money. And besides, if you have under 100,000 subscribers, which I don't really have any anticipation of ever achieving myself, you don't make a whole lot of money out of it. However, the folks here in Thailand, it would be a, a significant amount of money for them. If I could gather, let's say, you know, 20 or 30,000 subscribers, uh, from my research, the income that, that would come in from, from such a channel would be um, significant for the folks here in Thailand. So as I grow this and I get better at making videos and, and, and photographs, I can attract more models that, you know, could use a few bucks. Certainly if Thailand is anything, that's a country full of models. So today we're making a video, a short video, and it's just a silly video. I hope you like it. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna film the process and um, away we go. Shoes, a cabinet full of shoes. What do you think? You're wearing red, so. Yeah, the gray goes good. Sure. Or black. You have black. How about the black ones? I think the black is better. Yeah. They're cute. Look at me, an old fireman. Picking out sexy shoes for, for a photo shoot. I just love my retirement. That is a crazy looking dress, but hey, Miss Pear pulls it off. <laughs> About two weeks ago, I put up a video on TikTok that got 60,000 views. It was a completely ridiculous video. But success is success. And I figured if Hollywood could make sequels, so could I. Never hurt anybody. My trusty camera person here. We're a constant source of amusement to the motorcycle boys. So I think cop. <laughs> the nice part about being a novice at putting stuff like this together is that, you know, I'm not an expert, so I'm certainly open to suggestions. And I was gonna shoot this next photo on the marble floor, but the girls were like, no, no, go get that black silk thing that you had. And let's do it on that. And they're right, it's gonna make a much better photograph. You ready? Okay. Ready to get in place. A little kudos to, woo. A little kudos to John Sip on this one from Instagram for the inspiration.
when I made the decision last June to, uh, to return here to uh, Thailand and make this my home base and make a commitment to this family, basically. Um, you know, people who were once my employees are now my family, and I'm really uh, glad that I made the decision because so many good things have come up out of it. And uh, one of them is, you know, this, this hobby of photography that I've gotten into, and I don't know, there's a whole lot of good stuff happening. Uh, it's, it's a place that I never expected to be in. And, you know, how does that all come about? You know, I was floundering a little bit after having closed down my yoga studio in March of 2020 and not really knowing what my future would bring. Well, I, you know, I made a decision. I made a decision, you know, it's going to be Thailand. It's going to be a commitment to this family who, uh, who I care for. And uh, this will be my home base as, uh, you know, things are beginning to open up. I've already made travel plans. I'm going back to the U.S. in five weeks for a three-week visit. I, I have a few other trips uh, on my agenda planned. So, you know, I'm hoping that this, uh, this opening up uh, continues to go in the direction that it seems to be going in. That'll be nice because I do want to travel. I am retired. I'm not, you know, I'm not seeking a career. I, this, you know, photography, video is just a, a hobby. But because suddenly I, I was surrounded by people who, you know, like participating with me. And I, you know, have uh, seen an opportunity where I might do some good with this hobby as well. And, uh, you know, that's the direction I'm heading in. And all, is it, all it really took was a decision. I learned that a long time ago as a, as a, as a fireman. I was actually a lieutenant. I was a young lieutenant in the fire department. And I was uh, at a, a very serious event where there was an underground fire, a transformer vault underground, and the, the fire was communicating into the basement of a high-rise building. And it was a mess. I was standing in reserve, so I, I, got, I got to watch what was going on. And the chief in charge was getting a little overwhelmed. There had been an explosion underground, and they lost communication with the company. No, you know, they didn't know what was going on with that particular company. You know, had they been injured in the uh, in the explosion? They didn't know what the you know they, just, nobody knew. And up pulled Deputy Chief Dave. Corcoran, who was the uh, commander of Lower Manhattan. He was the highest ranking uh, fire officer in Lower Manhattan below 34th Street. And he stepped out of his car barking orders, ba 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 ba, and he took charge of the situation. And like I said, I wasn't engaged. I was just standing in reserve up until the point Dave pointed to me and gave me an order, get you know, engine five, and ba ba ba, you know, and he gave me some orders to, to do something. But he quickly got the situation under control. It turned out that the uh, fire company underground was okay. They had just lost communication. And, and I was just so impressed with his leadership, his decision-making uh, uh, skills. And uh, when I later got to talk to him, I asked him, how did you know what to do? He, he said, well, he goes, I, I, I know Manhattan very well. I know my job. He, he said, and I was, I was listening to reports on the radio on the way there. He said, but the thing about leadership is you have to lead. You have to stick an oar in the water. You have to get everybody moving in the same direction for a singular purpose. If you're wrong, you could always change direction. He says, just be decisive and go in the direction that your instinct tells you to go. And what I took away from that is something that I've employed in my life in, in a lot of occasions ever since, which is, you know, make a choice, make a decision, make a commitment, take a direction, and things will open up. You know, once you're focused on where you want to go, you know, the universe will provide. It will offer you all kinds of opportunities for, uh, uh, for things to unfold in your direction. At least that's been my experience over a very long life. So yeah, that's another little video in the, in the package. Uh, I'm off traveling next week back up to Chiang Mai. I think we'll have some inter interesting videos around that as well. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.